What is up, everybody? It is I, Penguin Rage, and we are live on Twitch and recording episode three of the Games Reloaded podcast. So thank you again to everybody that is tuning in. And as always, for the third time in a row, I am joined by Professor B or Brian. How's it going, Brian? It's going well. Excited to be here. Week three hype. Am I right? Well, technically week four, we fucked oh, up and true. didn't record yeah. week three, but you know, <laughs> sorry. True. Episode sorry. three hype. We'll go with yeah. that. There yeah. we go. But you know, that that's all good. We all had the 4th of July holiday weekend that weekend. We had family in town. You had to get back to Oklahoma. So uh, thank you to everybody out there for their patience uh, for not having week three of the episode three of the Games Reloaded podcast. But we're back and we got great stuff. So if anything, we timed it well because there's a little thing called Pokemon Go that just came out, which I know we'll get deeper into and all that fun stuff. But so... As always, thank you everybody that is joining us live on Twitch as we are recording the episode 3 of the Games Reloaded podcast. Um, feel free throughout the show, chime in, uh, send in your chat messages, say what you want to do. And of course, uh, we'll open it up at the end for some more questions. Um, for those of you, reminder, send emails um, to, I'll post it on the screen as well. I don't know why it's not right there right now. I clicked the wrong one. There it is. Uh, penguinragebiz at gmail.com and then this way you can get your questions read on the air if you're not able to tune in live on Twitch. Anyway, how you doing, Brian? What you been playing lately, man? How's things in the video game world with you? To me, it is exclusively two games right now, and these two games, I have been unable to put them down. Um, one of them for a little bit longer and one of them very recently, uh, and I think two people, everyone will kind of have an idea. Uh, I've continued to play Overwatch. I... I'm getting a lot better at it, and competitive play is here. Uh, I know for PC, I think it's been around for, I think, two weeks now, but for PlayStation and Xbox, it was just uh, put up. I think it was about a week, week and a half ago now, so I've been going on that. Uh, I obviously did my preliminary matches and been going at it quite a bit, and it's it's been cool. Uh, I mean, one of the main things is that the difference in competitive play is most people are live on the mic uh, when they're actually doing competitive, because that's how you win. Um, mm. So it's been cool. I've been meeting some new people on there, talking around, and uh, it's sometimes more frustrating, but it is a lot more competitive than the quick play mode. And then the other one, which I think is fairly obvious, because it seems like of 315 million people that live in the United States, 316 million of them are playing Pokemon Go. Uh, so that's also what I've been going crazy for. And whenever I'm not uh, out on campus walking around trying to catch the, the Pokemans, I'm back here playing Overwatch. So that's That's it right now. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think everybody tuning in right now, let us know if you're playing Pokemon Go, because I think that is the big topic. That's going to be part of our uh, larger uh, topic oh, of the Mystic show. Oh, Team Mystic for life. Uh, that's what I'm on to, blue team. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, it was Overwatch last weekend. It was Song of the Deep, uh, which just released today. Mm -hmm. um, and some more Witcher. So yeah, and then of course Pokemon Go. Uh, but I think the biggest thing for me is uh, Song of the Deep. Um which we'll get into the news that this is a recent release. But, you know, Song of the Deep, I don't know. It's a game coming out from Insomniac Games. Uh, the guys that brought you Ratchet and Clank, Sunset Overdrive, uh, Resistance, that series. Um, great game, Metroidvania style. Uh, $14.99 on Steam, PlayStation, Xbox. Great, uh, simple, easily affordable uh, game. Uh, challenging, puzzle-based, very beautiful-looking game. And it's got some pretty decent reviews across the board. I think it's got about a 70 on Metacritic. I know Greg Miller tweeted out that he does like it a lot. So um, I'll give a shout-out to Song of the Deep. Definitely a, a cute game there, a beautiful, nice, what, relaxing game. What is it even about? Like, I, I I hadn't heard about it until, like, three days ago when people were hyping it up for the release. Yeah, it's basically, long story short, it's uh, one of the creators at Insomniac, his daughter, uh, helped inspire it about uh this girl and her father who's a fisherman and he went out to sea to go fish and got lost at sea so basically she built a submarine and went on this uh adventure to go find him and uh, has to encounter many puzzles it's very like mystical so, yeah yeah kind of relaxing yeah. laid-back game kind of like journey or something like that maybe not the same aesthetic more, but same idea right yeah and a bit more ch challenging than journey when it comes to like okay. kind of the puzzle solving and stuff like that but um Definitely a very beautiful game, and 
for fifteen dollars and the yeah. nice thing for fifteen dollars too that's also at retail so if you are someone that prefers having the box art and the art of the game uh, it's at retail gamestop stores as well um, but fifteen dollar game came out on playstation xbox and steam today so uh, check that out but yeah that's kind of the main games i've been playing i'm supposed to be playing undertale uh courtesy of osri uh who donated that to our stream last week but uh have not been able to get to it yet. And then obviously I want to keep chipping away at the Witcher. So, And then Pokemon Go. I'm only level 6. I'm still new, but we're getting there little by little with it. So, I mean, that's pretty much what I've been playing. Uh, anything else you've been going into? Like I said, no. It's just been Overwatch and Pokemon Go. I haven't even... This is probably in the last... Since the Taking King came out, which is what it was, that was like November last year, or was that even oh, a little bit before? September, that? September last year. September last uh -huh. year. This is the longest I've probably gone without turning on Destiny. Um, it's probably yeah. been two weeks, if not more, now that I've actually played that. And not as a sign of that, I'm not going to come back to it. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination done with it. It's just a matter of uh, Overwatch still has the craze right now and i think that is a game that i will be playing for quite a long time i know matt told me he was going to pick it up today so that'll help out with that mm. um so i think that's something i'll continue to play but uh it's not to say that uh, this is the same thing happened last year i think well, last summer i was still going crazy with destiny the whole time but as it got to the weeks towards the taken king i wasn't playing it too much because you kind of get in a little bit of the lull of it but uh I'm sure I'll get back to it soon. I know most of my friends that I've been that I usually play it with have been traveling and been all around. And if they're not on, then I usually don't hop on too much just by myself anymore. So right now, like I said, just Overwatch and Pokemon Go. It's been crazy. Yeah. No, I I hear you there. And shout out to Overwatch. We're rocking an Overwatch shirt right now, which you guys can go check out and everything like that. So uh, yeah, Overwatch is the shit. And you know, part of me still is. It's upset. Set. I'm. I'm it's upsetting, or I am upset. The, with the fact that you know, like you said, Destiny. I, I haven't had that itch to go back. Part of me wants to, but I got so much grinding to do to get my light level yeah. up. It's it's one yeah. of those where if you fall out, it's like, do you, yeah. is it even worth going back? You've got quite a bit to do if you wanted to catch up to where you're going to need to be to be able to do everything every week. So that's the nice thing about where all at is that. It's kind of makes the lull also a little bit of that. We're almost we're to the point now that. We're strong enough to do everything, but not all of us are 335 yet. And But some of us just need to keep doing these same things over and over and over, which is fine. I mean, that's part of the grind, and I mean, that's just how those yeah. games go. But for you, you're going to have the trouble of that. You're a little bit behind, so you still can't do some of the things that will get you the best stuff. So you you, you honestly do probably have quite a few hours ahead of you. Um, yeah, well, before. we'll, we'll have Maybe. to dedicate a night where we get the old crew together. Everybody gets on. We'll stream it, and we'll do a marathon stream. I'm talking like six to ten hours of Destiny grinding, going through raids, whatever it is, so that we can prepare for when the oh. uh, the next expansion sure. comes out. To do that, um, and then you should plan that. Uh, I mean, we can try and set it up. I mean, we'll we'll we'll. we'll early precedent here but whenever the new the new stuff does come out you should set aside that day that it comes out for a good few hour stream and then when the new raid drops i'm by all means ready to go and if we want to do it that the hour it drops we'd be ready to go and we play it yeah no i'm i think it's worth doing the chase uh off look at vacation time and all that good stuff but <laughs> yeah but other than that yeah it's overwatch so all my viewers tuning in on twitch i see you sloth i see you emily i see you may thank you for being here um friday nights has kind of become overwatch night so brian if matt's getting it we'll get silver we'll get Derek, we'll get everybody to do overwatch again this friday if possible if not probably on saturday um but without a further ado let's get into the news shall we sounds good Okay, well, uh, we touched on this a little bit, so there's some new releases this week across the board. Uh, nothing too mind-blowing or massive from a AAA standpoint, but uh, we already mentioned Song of the Deep uh, just released for $14.99 on every platform, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Um, are you planning on pick that one up, Brian? I honestly have no idea. Um, it's, it's a case of... I have two games to be playing right now that I really don't think I'm going to get distracted from at all. So uh, it maybe eventually. I mean, I want it's 15 bucks, so we'll see. But as of right now, I, I don't think so. Right, right. Now, uh, I hear you. Uh, Monster Hunter Generations. Uh, so Monster Hunter fans out there, uh, I think I haven't looked too much deep into this. If, it's, if I'm not mistaken, this might be a 
uh, collection of sorts. You know anything on it? Is, is that I know I I know of Monster Hunter. I mean, I have a couple friends that just go absolutely crazy for Monster Hunter on the 3DS, but uh, I I don't really know much about it. I've never played it. They wanted me to get into it, but I just really wasn't feeling it. <laughs> no, I know I I had it on the on the 3DS as well when I had one for two weeks before I sold it for beer money. Um, <laughs> yeah, da, 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 I'm trying to see right now. Oh, da, da, da. I think it's, to me they call it generations as if it would seem I gotta like it's, assume a, it's 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 a gathering of at least a few games. But is I got it, the is it coming to PlayStation and Xbox or is it just no, for like three? No, this is 3DS. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. it it's like the other titles in Monster Hunter series. Players undertake quests that involve hunting dangerous creatures. It doesn't say anything that it's actually like a collection, so it might actually be a brand new one. Sorry for our ignorance there, guys. Just not. Monster Hunter fans. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, no, no. if you are, it is releasing this week. Uh, I believe on the 16th. Um, also releasing this week, we have Necropolis, um, which I actually watched a stream on Twitch a couple days ago. I watched uh, Tiger Rider streaming that. Um, game has a very interesting, neat art style to it. Um, I don't know too much about it. I believe it's an indie title. Um, a lot of people have been hyping this one up for quite some time. So Necropolis, check it out. Looks very good. And then Brian, your last edition there. Yeah, the last one that uh, I just I haven't played it, but again, know it from friends that are big PC gamers. Uh, Kerbal Space Program is coming to console. Um, so that's uh, something that I know. Uh, there's a huge like niche following for that game. Like one of my buddies, he's put thousands and thousands of hours into that, and it's probably a game I would like quite a bit. It's all about engineering spaceships and rockets and stuff like that and getting to uh, uh, things as such. But uh, again, I don't know if that's another one I would pick up just because you got to have uh, your your time set straight of what you're going to put your gaming into. And right, right. I, I only have so many hours and I, I think that's something I would enjoy, but I don't know if I would have enough time to really get to a point of where I, I would enjoy it the most, I guess. So, No, fair enough. All right, well, that's the main games that are coming out this week. Um, so we'll just dive into more of the news that has actually happened. Um, but we're speaking about Overwatch, and Overwatch is one of our bigger games and one of the most uh, largest followings on Twitch. Um, Overwatch has a new character coming out. So I'm sure most of the people would have already seen this. They were hyping it, kind of leaking it all last week. Um, but there's a new character uh what's the name called again i thought it was anna yes yeah. anna anna whatever it is uh support character who uses a rifle and other abilities to simultaneously heal her teammates and hurt her foes uh so think of a sniper rifle uh, or a sniper ability but someone that's far away can heal and everything like that yeah and i think the um yeah so here's and actually i got a the, video the cool here thing, the, so i'll the put cool the video thing on. that i th that um was it her? I mean, it's it's really neat. So the whole sniper idea is is pretty cool because it's like one thing. You know, you can have a sniper that doesn't have to mindlessly follow around people that can actually sit back. It's a pretty cool strategy. Mm -hmm. so the other thing that I think is interesting is that they have she has a grenade that, for one thing, if you throw it your own, uh, like increases the speed of their healing. So she's going to be a good character to go alongside Lucio and Mercy. But any other enemies caught in that grenade actually do not receive healing for a period of time. So this right. is something that's going to be, I think she's going to be a really, really, really cool um, kind of combo character of that. For one thing, she ha she's going to obviously have her main purpose, which is going to be healing. But I think that combo with the grenade is going to be really unique. And she's yeah. going to be a, what's going to be called like a offensive support. So she's going to be not the only support character that players are usually going to have on their team. They're going to have her alongside probably Mercy or Lucio. Right. And okay. Zenyatta, because Zenyatta actually just got a uh, uh, an update today too that he actually is apparently now going to be usable for a support character. So we'll see. No, I think it looks really awesome. And if you're tuning in right now or watching the video on YouTube, um, you can see... Like Brian mentioned, it's a whole different add to the uh, strategy fact here where she sits back uh, further away where not only is she can obviously damage enemies, she's healing you as you're uh, more on the front lines, the uh, the heavies and everything that are more up there. And then, of course, like you said, the grenade that they just showed her using. So uh, I think it's great that they're already coming out with new content for the game. Uh, it is free, I believe. Right, Brian? 
I, as far as I know, yeah, I haven't seen anything about it, it being a cost or whatever, which I think from day one, uh, Blizzard's been pretty open in that every new character is not going to have any DLC associated with it. It's just, sorry, new character DLC will be there, but it won't cost anything. Right. So I think they're, they've got the microtransactions in there for, to get more loot crates. Um, but I think that's the main thing they're going for. I don't think there's going to be any sort of paid DLC, at least as I'm aware of for the game right now. Right, right. No, uh, I, I think that's a great thing. And if I pull the story back up, which uh, I had to close it. Yeah, I believe it is free. So I think it will be a future update that just adds the new character, which is awesome for Overwatch that's fans. Great. And yeah. I mean, the fact that they're already doing this in the game's not even been out, I guess, a month. It's probably about, about a month. So, uh, yeah, it's been out for a bit now. And actually something else that I just read here that I didn't, it has not been part of the headlines uh, for people that do play the game. Um, one thing that is a uh, big part of there's a big confliction about whether or not people like it or if they don't is actually after season two finishes, the sudden death feature of the game will be removed in favor of ending a game in a tie. So uh -huh. that's interesting. I, uh, I don't know how I feel about that because I know a lot of people that hate the sudden death uh, feature of it and that uh, it's, it's, it, some people say it's not very fair, um, but I don't know how much I like a tie. I mean, maybe that's us just here in North America. There's no such thing as a tie in our sports, but over in Europe and whatnot, ties are part of their daily lives in soccer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, nonetheless, good stuff coming for Overwatch. Um, next has been a pretty big one that's been circling the headlines for the last few days. Um, and this has nothing to do with the CSGO uh, controversy uh, that from the YouTuber YouTube video and making the gambling stuff. I, I figured not to put that one up there because I think that one's been exhausted since last week. But kind of in the same realm, um, Warner Brothers is in some trouble right now with... Um, their game Shadow of Mordor, which was a great game, came out about, oh, God, I guess a year and a half ago now. It's been a while. Um, yeah. They paid YouTubers to promote the game and talk about the game, which is nothing new. It's okay. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. that. That happens all the time. That's new media. That's just, just like a commercial on TV with actors. Um, but the catch is when you pay someone to speak positively about your product, and this is a paid money exchanging hands partnership, you have to dictate disclose this publicly mm -hmm. so that the people viewing this or reading it or whatever it is know that this may not be quote unquote authentic because this is a paid promotion it's basically yeah. having an actor speak during a commercial saying this is the greatest thing ever you should check it out um so long story short um warner brothers is getting in some heat uh they worked with some big time youtubers such as pewdiepie um yeah, it, and it i'm not I, me because it, i'm not I, discounting it, the the youtubers because they're just doing what they do, and yeah. if they yeah. weren't told to disclose it, it's a whole new world. This is something new, but obviously they're not getting punished. I mean, it's it's, a it's unethical, but I mean, if I don't know, I mean, I, I where does the ethics come in? I mean, if Warner Brothers told them to not say anything about it, then it's like, well, then that would I guess they could be breaching contract if they did disclose it. So I don't know where I, the 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 ethical line is drawn or whatever. But the one thing that just irks me is that it's promoting Shadow of Mordor, which is was such a good game and i don't want any sort of negativity being held over it i mean i mean i guess in the end a year and a half later is it going to affect the sales of it or something no of course not but no, no, uh, no. it's just I, that was such a great game <laughs> that's all i wanted to add yeah it. the nice thing is it doesn't steal any of the thunder of the game the game's been out for so long it's not going to take away from any sales the reviews spoke for itself when it did come out and it sold very well warner brothers i don't have the statistics in front of me but i believe this game sold very very well and um, it was beloved by a lot of people. Great DLC came out for it. So I don't think this is going to deter anything. Um, it's not even that big of a deal. It's just talking about the settlement where there's a settlement where you know, basically Warner Brothers had to pay uh, the FCC or the whatever it is, um, FTC. And it is what it is. It's just basically, hey, Warner Brothers and for YouTubers and all other publishers moving forward, don't fuck up. Like this is learning things for everybody that hey like me as a twitch person like yeah. if i'm getting paid to do something he would making a youtube video uh sponsorships anything to do with the the podcast or whatever it, it has to be disclosed it has to be said from the beginning in the description of the uh the about of the the product that is uh being put out there so you know the, the it, key, key to this is that it's this isn't the first time something like this has happened i mean you mentioned no. the uh the counter-strike go situation of where 
they were gambling or this these guys that had created this gambling website were basically promoting it and showing them winning on this gambling website without disclosing that they were part of it. Uh, I think, is that a different situation? I think so, because that is a case of that for every person they convinced to go into gambling in Counter-Strike Go, they're going to get a dollar back in their pocket or some amount of money back in their pocket. Versus this is, I mean, it's definitely not the first time that any sort of like play paid substance has gone into uh, promotion. I mean, in regards to something like this, is it ethical and should it continue happening? No, and I hope that the limelight that it's brought to Warner Brothers and the, I'm sure the fee the fine they're going to have to pay for it, hopefully uh, steers them away from ever doing again and kind of sends a big uh, a red card up that every other company shouldn't try and do it. But is it the worst thing in the world? Not really. I mean, I guess it's not what we want because it gets rid of uh, uh, what's authentic in regards to reviews or people having unbiased opinions towards games. But uh, and I mean, if this was a, I'm sure maybe some of the YouTubers were more devout, like reviewers, but the one that stuck out to me, obviously with the biggest one was PewDiePie. It's like, well, is PewDiePie really seen as uh, a critically acclaimed um, critic himself? Like, right. So is he the one that everyone's going to for the reviews? Not really. I, I doubt it. I mean, it's the same thing that the tie-in I can have with it is Top Gear. So Top Gear got sued because they were like, oh, you're hurting the reputation of my company, my car, because you're saying something negative about it. And uh, you're being you, we, we provided it for you. And this is this is against a breach of contract. And the way they got by it is that, well, we're not actually seen as um, a professional reviewing team. Like I'm talking about the original Top Gear. Uh, we are uh, an entertainment show. So that's how they got around it is that our opinion should be is is not representative of an actual like professional opinion this is an entertainment position so right, right. if you add that into something like pewdiepie i don't really see a problem with it i mean obviously should they disclose it yes but the whole idea of them paying them it's it's smart i mean like i said it's there's nothing wrong with it um it's been done a lot but it's the same tie-in of that i guess if you have some reviewer that or say if they were paying ign and ign bumped their score up two points because they paid them obviously that is going to get rid of any sort of integrity that, say, IGN would have. But with PewDiePie, I mean, again, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking too broadly, but I just don't think for him it's really going to reflect or change any opinion on PewDiePie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we'd have to go back and see what he even said in the video. But like we said, at this point, I don't think it's really relevant or even really matters at that point. But it... <laughs> It's still wrong. We don't know who all was involved, sure. what the videos were, and if PewDiePie was still out there saying, oh, yeah, everybody has to go pick this one up because I love it. I mean, it's still technically kind of being like that versus, hey, guys, this is awesome game. Here's what it is. So it, it's a learning thing. I don't think it's anything that really sweat bullets about because this shit happens in every industry, and you know, people just got to be more careful. Yeah. And just disclose it. Just, no, tell, it. just tell your audience, hey, exactly. exactly. Warner Brothers has given me the wonderful opportunity to check out this game. So, yes, this is a promotion. This is a sponsor. This whatever you want to call it. So thank you to them. And of course, here we are diving into the uh, into whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's I think the key to it is that it's one thing. It's like, OK, if it was it's simp if it's simply being an entertainer, it needs to be understood of that. Yes, they were paid. But is it going to be a breach of any sort of integrity? I don't think so. So as long as they yeah. disclose it. But in the case that where it becomes a breach of integrity is that, like I said, say IGN or GameSpot or some of these big websites that do reviews, if they were to be even if they were to say, oh, yes, we were paid. So now here's a review and people go to that to look to see what they think about the game. I think that's where it's like, this is just going to hurt the industry and I don't want that. But for someone like PewDiePie or mm -hmm. a YouTube star, it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. It I depends. Mean, I, I it, it really depends on their money. MO, but it exactly. still has to be said. So, and yeah. shout out to Casey real quick, jumping into the chat here while at work. Appreciate you stopping by while we're recording. All right, and then the last thing on the bit of news that we're going to go over here, which will also then mold and segue into our topic of the day, will be Pokemon Go. So first and foremost, Woo. Pokemon Go is big. It's successful. It's kicking ass already. It's kind of fucking crazy. So the headline here um, by Eddie at GameSpot says, Pokemon Go launch adds $9 billion to Nintendo's market cap. And an international release is coming soon. Meaning this thing hasn't even launched globally yep. yet. It's just Japan and, it's and US already right now. a massive phenomenon. I don't even think it's in Japan, Brian. I think it has been for a while now. It was already out in Japan before it was out here. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, but let me just go through some of the statistics here uh, attributed by Eddie. Um, well, the Wall Street Journal report, reports today that the game is coming to Europe, Japan, and other a- Asian nations within a few days. So oh, it has not come out in those countries yet. It is only available in the U.S., Australia, and New Zealand. It's not even in Canada yet. Seriously. And, and that's how big it already is. So this information comes from people familiar with plans for the game. So there you go. People in the other uh, areas of the world coming soon. Also, uh, let's get in here. The Wall Street Jur- Journal also reports that Pokemon Go's release has made a huge impact on Nintendo's business outlook. Shares of the company rose 25% in Tokyo today, building an in- on increases from last Thursday and Friday. Uh, this comes out to $9 billion worth of market capitalization, pushing Nintendo's, Nintendo's total market cap to almost $28 billion. Now, that's not revenue. That's not profit. That's not money into their pocket. This is growing their percentage, their 25% lift on their stock market, meaning that it, it equals to about $9 billion worth of market capitalization. Um, also, so it, it's it's the idea of that. I mean, I, I, I believe I'm correct with this, that the idea of that if they were to sell this concept to someone else, that the minimum market cap they'd probably start the bidding at would be about $9 billion. Yes, exactly. Now, other thing to take note of, I don't think many people actually understand this and know this, Nintendo does not own outright the Pokemon company. Well, um, they... Get, no, don't confuse I'm, with that. So it's that they Nintendo they own, owns thirty two percent of the Pokemon company, but well, they, they own, own the IP. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they own the IP is still the key here. So it's not like yep. some other company can run off and start changing. Everything that happens has to go through Nintendo. Yeah, but also there's more uh, information that hasn't come out completely. But people that are interested in the numbers and that sort of thing, um, the Pokemon or Nintendo for that matter are only getting about ten percent of the profits that do come from this game sales as it's the creator, the developer of the actual game and app. Google actually is a big stake in this as well. Yeah, because um, yeah, it's using a bunch of, I mean, the, the whole app basically runs off of Google APIs, and it just has like a filter on top of it. Yep. Yeah. so basically Google owns uh, parts or rights to this. I don't know exactly how the break breakdown works, but they've they're got pieces of the pie uh, to basically put it simple. <laughs> well, um, I mean, the, the thing you, you got to throw at the bottom here. So, I mean, it's... So Pokemon Go obviously is a success. I mean, I don't know if they expect it to be quite this much of a success, but I think no one right now is going to tell you, oh, no, this game is not leaning out to what it's supposed to be. But I think well, one of the biggest well, things that... When we say success, let, let me just give one other statistic that's actually not from this article. It was on a Far- Forbes article I read yesterday. It is 5.3% as of yesterday, probably is more today, but 5.3% of Android users in the U.S. <laughs> are using this game actively. That it's, is 5% of a huge percentage of the entire population of the country, the United States. It is almost equal the amount of use of Twitter on a day-to-day it's, basis it's, on, it's, on Android. On, yeah, on Android, a report said Pokemon Go is now bigger than Tinder in the U.S. and is closing in on Twitter. I believe, actually, yesterday it was bigger than Twitter on iOS. Yeah. And then uh, Google just... changed their t- statistics. I can't talk tonight, guys. Yeah. Um, Jesus, I'm not drunk. Right that's why. No, I'm not drunk. Um, <laughs> they're uh, on the Google Play Store. Um, it they changed the t- the, the statistics. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, to where it crossed the 10 million do- 10 million download threshold. So it's between the 10 million and 50 million threshold now. Uh, and in what? Not even a week. I think it's been, it was the 7th, I think is when it, it was the 6th or the 7th, so I don't even think it's been a week yet. No, I think it no. was. Yeah, I think it was Thursday yeah. last week, right? Yeah, I think it was exactly a week ago or maybe uh, uh, six days ago that it came out, and that's that's unheard of, right? I mean, it's not even like, okay, this would be different if it was like, this was just apps that have a utility, you know, like something like or Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram. I mean, it's like those type of things that, if there was already a bunch of hype behind it, I mean, like I said, if Instagram were to come out with this new uh, idea of this new separate app, I mean, when there's millions and millions of people downloading it, it kind of goes with it, you know? I mean, there's always a, a, a user base that associates with it. But this is this is a game. That's the thing that's got to be understood here is that it's, I know mobile gaming already is quite the big thing. I mean, it's not like mobile gaming is not relevant, but it's like, 
I can tell you when Clash of Clans or even Angry Birds, I think when it first came out, I don't even think they quite had the success this did. Not this I don't know. I, 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 I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't have the statistics in front of me. Maybe I'm wrong. And, and people can and re- write in and tweet at us if I'm incorrect with that. But from just a preemptive idea of the people that I see around me playing it, like being on a college campus, and we'll get onto mm-hmm. this more, but it's like I have, I have never seen something quite as crazy as this maybe maybe the the something i can compare it to is that it was like literally star wars yeah the amount of people talking about it and the amount of people hyped for it it is probably the last thing that was quite as big as this was star wars which is insane no i i think it's crazy i mean i think it shows the power of the long-term ips that nintendo has such as Pokemon, that I grew up with this, you grew up with this. It's people now that are in their prime that are able to do something that, like, I don't play the DS anymore, and many people my age don't either, but they still appreciate Pokemon. They they let go of Pokemon when it got way too many different types of Pokemon and a million different versions and blah, blah, blah. Like, I eventually walked away from it, but it's still in the back of your heart, in the back of your mind, is it's nostalgic. And then when it comes out on a platform such as the phone, that is easily accessible, easy to understand, and makes it to where it's engaging with everybody else and people that aren't necessarily gamers, but still know what Pokemon is and did grow up with Pokemon, whether it be the cards, the TV show, the movies, or the games when they were younger. Now it opens those doors, and that kind of brings it to the larger topic of the future of Nintendo. Is it yeah, Should Nintendo so, move to the smartphones? I, I mean, if, if, if a, the idea of Nintendo just becoming a third-party developer has ever crossed anyone's mind and they felt discouraged because there's no evidence of their success i feel like this is the representation of their success did nintendo put this game onto their own hardware no they put it onto hardware that already exists and is already successful um and and i think should they give up on console gaming or things like that by all means no should they abandon anything like that no i I, i'm meaning that i think this is a good representative that the power of the IP that they own and the amount of people that will play it, this is what you need to do. You just need to release the game and have as many people as possible uh, accessible to it. And they did it very well with mobile gaming. It's not like they tried to pull any bullshit of, all right, it's going to come out on iOS on July 5th and then all Android users will get it October 2019. You know, that stupid shit like that was, what game was it? A Fallout Shelter, they did that. They put it on iOS and then like a month later it came out on Android. They were like, Here's the game. Here's as many people that want to play it. Let's give it to you. And holy fuck, now we suddenly have I, I, millions and millions of people playing this every day. And okay. I think this is a good indication of that. This is how they're going to make their money now. Well, okay. So that's basically talking mobile. So in your eyes, and I agree, I think them moving into a third party realm makes sense. We're talking mobile games. We're move, moving into mobile, whether it be from the DS, the, the handheld, to mobile uh, cell phones, uh, devices such as tablets, everything like that. Is that is this the end of the DS? Is this the end of the handheld? And they start putting everything know. on mobile devices? Or, okay, but also the other half of this is, well, what about the Nintendo NX? What about their console? What about, okay, because there's two parts to that. So like, you go on this journey with me for a second here. Let's go on the journey. The journey. Um, the, the NX is rumored, and it's strictly rumors here, to kind of be a hybrid console where it's your console at home, you do it at home, you're on the big screen, but it's also you somehow in some way are able to pick it up and continue going outside of the house on the, the new DS, if you will, on the new handheld by Nintendo. Now, if that's the case... Maybe the handheld going where you want to go is the phone. The NX somehow connects with your phone, you take it with you. Or is it they're just completely scrapping the handheld and you got your NX and then you got your cell phone and then, but okay, but then if, they, if it, they're better off being a third party publisher, why would, even, why would they even make a console? Put, and, put and, your games on mobile, put your games on PlayStation, yeah. put your games on Xbox, whatever you want. And I think for, in. in if you, if I suddenly was the CEO of Nintendo tomorrow, I think that's what I would do. Maybe, and I'm sure maybe there's a lot more to it than uh, obviously is just surface level and that what we're looking at. And we see it obviously from an out, outside perspective. We don't see a lot of the numbers of like where their money is coming in now. I know right. we see the numbers of their console sales and obviously they're not making much money off of that. But, not the Wii U. 
Yeah, but I mean, it's the, the DS. They've made a, a fuck ton amount of money. Yeah, they, but it's it, but it's been on a major decline for the last sure, two, sure, sure. two of years. Course. But I mean, it's it's interesting because it's the whole it's the whole point of like I think I, I think our, with them releasing the NX, is that a good idea? I really have no idea. I mean, is it? Could it be in the next Wii? Sure, it really could be. But could it be the next Wii U and just completely bomb again? That could definitely happen. Also, I mean, if they come out and they only do, uh, if first parties are the only things that are there to hype up the game, as it has been, really, that's all it was for the Wii U and for even a lot of the Wii. I think people are starting to realize, like, well, consoles I'm... need to become more diverse. And as is very evident with the PlayStation and Xbox, I think a lot of their success needs to be handed over to third-party developers at this point and that 100 yes, i mean sony you obviously your audience with, yeah you know, it sony obviously has a lot of success with their first party games by uh, no stretch of the imagination would would anyone deny that i mean obviously with just naughty dog themselves and and xbox has their fair share too i mean uh, maybe not quite as successful in regards to being uh, critically acclaimed as what some of the sony de developers have done right now but they still have their following uh, but if you look at the number of games and the most successful games on those two consoles, there are third party games. And if Nintendo can't get on that bandwagon and get part of that, then they're, I don't think they're really ever going to have a console that's going to compete with. Well, I, I, I think it's beyond that too. I think it's, everybody knows Nintendo makes great games. Their first party games, their studios, M Mario, Nintendo, Metroid, Zelda. I mean, those names speak for themselves. Pokemon, <laughs> you know, and the issue was with the Wii U, now, even with the Wii, the Wii came out and it sold gangbusters and it was fucking spectacular. But then it was just a, the third parties all got on board because it sold so well. Yeah. And it, but it did it, it was a bunch of crap, more crap, 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 crap. And it was quick money, quick money, quick money. And then it was people stopped playing the Wii because they were just crappy games. The gimmick of the motion stuff kind of had to die off. And then the only time they would get back on it is when a major first party game came out. Then yep. the Wii U comes around, the gimmick's gone from the motion. Because it was still uh, available for people to do it, but there's no point in buying a brand new console when the motion's the exact same as the one before it. So the people that were doing that, like retirement homes and everything, there's no point in upgrading. The hardcore audience are gonna buy it, but that's shrinking every day because they're understanding they can do so much more, whether it be PC, PlayStation, Xbox. And the hardest of the hardcore Nintendo fans bought it for those uh, those first party games, those Nintendo games. And people like me, people like you, we whether you buy one or you don't, we're not playing them. We're not using them. We're not buying games. I, I got Mario Kart, Smash Bros, and Yoshi. That Pikmin, is it. Basically, is all I got. Yeah. That is it on that entire console generation. And the thing has been outsold fucking five to one by PlayStation and three to one by Xbox. It's it's staggering. And they've been out for two less years. Yeah, and and it's not even just the third party support they make it too difficult for third parties third parties aren't going to invest in it when they have these different ways that they have to make their games be accessible to users with the the big pad and the fisher price fucking pad and whatever it is but it's also the lack of online multiplayer support on a very easy well-to-do platform such as the playstation or the xbox i mean the sharing abilities now are everything whether it be screenshots live gameplay on twitch or youtube uh, uploads a video to Facebook, like that's key as well. Sharing with your friends yeah. and your family, and they're missing all those aspects as well, which is also what third parties want. And and with the, with the with the rumors of the Xbox Scorpio, the PlayStation Neo, and obviously the ability of PC to get cheaper and cheaper and more easy, if this Nintendo NX comes out next year, and there's a new PlayStation upgrade next year and a new Xbox upgrade next year, are do they even stand a chance? Well, I think the key to it is that if 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 I was again Nintendo and I had the choice of releasing a console, I would say no. I would just say we're just going to become a third party developer. We're going to put these these games we're developing on these on this console basis that has close to now, I think probably close to 70 or 80 million people on it. And it's only going to get bigger. Let's just release our game for that. And we are going to sell millions of copies if we release these games on these two consoles here. Um but I don't think realistically that's what Nintendo is going to do. I mean, I think they, they want to keep their, their independence from the other two companies. And I think the only way I can really see this console being success is that if Nintendo 
really starts to get away from the whole mentality of that their console is for the I, again, I know this might upset some people, and I'm not meaning this by any case of that. It's more of a casual console than what PlayStation and Xbox is, and that it's a, I don't I don't know how to phrase that differently other than just like you know if you look at historically at their consoles, they're usually underpowered and under <clears throat> don't have as many features quite as as the other two consoles have been laid laid next to them. And they and it comes to simplicity, and it comes to just again their console is not what sells the console; it's the game that sells those consoles. Um, right. But I think what they're going to have to do is they are going to have to put their big boy pants on and it's going to be time that Nintendo comes out with a console that is going to be top tier on graphics, top tier on frame rates, things like that. But then also is going to have to be this, um, again, I'm not saying needs to go into different stretches of, of entertainment because I think we saw from Xbox that's not really the success is for consoles, but I'm meaning of that. Keep it within reason, right? Keep you, it within reason. Yeah. Do, do all the sharing features like you talked there. And I don't know, they got to put their heads together. They got to think of something else cool that will make people interact with games. Don't make it so it's like some TV gimmick or things like but that. The, I mean, you, you think they, the amount of money and resources and time they're going to have to put into developing one of these consoles and everything that will go with it, with the infrastructure, the back end, everything like that, rollout. Uh, is that not better off just being being put toward developers and investing in creating more and amazing games with the IPs that already exist sure. and putting it on a PlayStation, put it on a computer, but, put it on a cell phone? Like, I mean, let's be honest here. Let, uh, the, ne- the Let's say the Nintendo NX comes out next year and they release it with a Pokemon game, one of the biggest IPs they have, right? It won't mm-hmm. even come close to the amount of success they are getting on the phone and the revenue they will get from on the phone. And we sure. haven't even and been out a week I think yet. That's fine. I think that's okay. I, mean, I don't think that's what's deterring them. I, I'm just saying that I think if they want to make this next console successful, they're going to have to get away from this whole... And I don't know if it was an intentional mentality, but currently what really is seen as Nintendo is that if you buy a Nintendo, you're buying a Nintendo to play Nintendo games. They oh, yeah. have to get at mm-hmm. that. No, you're buying the Nintendo NX... And look, here's Call of Duty, here's Battlefield 1, here's all of these big third-party games. And holy shit, they look and run well on a Nintendo console. Something yeah. we've never been able to say is that we have never seen a good Call of Duty. But, a good Call but of Brian, Duty the bigger Nintendo question console. is, okay, you, you Call of Duty, Battlefield, I don't know, the, the big third-party games that everybody plays on everything. Even the sports games, right? NBA, Madden, NHL. What would make me or you or this 12 year old greasy kid down the street that's playing his xbox is how are they going to get him or her or anybody off of the playstation off of the xbox or off of the pc to play those games such as call of duty on a nintendo with their nintendo exclusives that's going to be the deal breaker it's the same reason why anyone chooses between playstation and xbox is that the exclusives that are going to be on that console so if they can get the same thing that the same third parties they want on those other consoles, but they prefer Nintendo exclusives. That's how they're going to get people. But I think that's where the, the the gap is. The types of people that are buying the Call of Duties, the NBAs, the Maddens, they're the people that are wanting the exclusives such as Gears of War or the exclusives such as The Last of Us to where it would still know. make more sense to then I have a PlayStation or an Xbox. Percentage. I think for some percentage that's true, but I think as Pokemon Go is very evident, no matter what your age is and no matter what type of game you're playing, people are enjoying Pokemon. And if I they agree, can... but where are all these people on the NX? Or not the NX, on the Wii U. Where were they? Why didn't they buy one? Oh, but there's no there's no good Pokemon game on it. That's okay. what I'm saying. Is that I, I'm I'll give you that, but, but that's the thing. It's, it's one thing to make someone go spend $400, $500, whatever these consoles are going to cost to then go play three or four games through the entirety of a life cycle when they could literally put these things out on a phone, which is something everybody in this country has that will open doors to people. Me and you both know people that don't play video games anymore just because they're moved on with their lives, they're married, they have kids, they're working, whatever it is. But they are grew up with Pokemon, and a lot of them remember the love they had for Pokemon, and they will download this app on their phone. And that is what Nintendo is realizing, I'm hoping, with Pokemon Go, that they're opening a whole other market of people that they just can't capture with yeah, and, a console, and, and, right? And that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, I think it's just a case of that. I agree completely. I think Nintendo should put a big, a big focus on mobile gaming now. I mean, I, I know right now. I don't honestly, play- now audience, 
I honestly it's, don't want that because I want Nintendo to succeed in the console world because I want a healthy oh, Nintendo sure, sure, helps sure. grow no, the category, right? And that's what I was going to say is that I think there's going to be two worlds of Nintendo now that they need to have this console this console side to it, which is what I was talking about yeah. is that I think they need to change their mentality a little bit on their console side and that if they want to have success, they need to follow what's been successful. And way back in the day, maybe what they were doing was successful, but it's not working anymore. Versus oh, yeah. then there's this other side of Nintendo, which needs to focus on mobile gaming. So I'm not saying give up by any means of console gaming. I'm saying they do need to put a preemptive focus on, on mobile gaming because I think it's successful. Because yeah. I even know right now, if they were to put red, blue, and yellow, like the original games, they just ported it to the to the... Um, to Android and iOS, and say they for all oh, three of them, you can get them for five bucks. <laughs> you get them for five bucks. I could tell you they would sell millions and millions of copies of that within a week if they did. And everybody's been saying that for the last five, ten years since these yeah. things have been powerful enough to run that with emulators, and people are already doing yeah. it. And oh, I was I played Pokemon Sapphire back on my my phone like four years ago. So I mean, the emulators have been there, but it's still an aspect of like if they come out with a dedicated version of the game that allows me to trade with people over the internet. Yeah, that, oh my God! <laughs> no, I know. I mean, you see with the power of what Pokemon Go is doing, yeah, and yeah. I, I will be the first one to tell you. Yeah, I'm a PlayStation guy. I love Xbox. I love PC, and I still love Nintendo. But Nintendo hasn't done shit for me since the GameCube. The Wii, yeah. I, I was one of the few people that did not fall into the gimmick that was the Wii, the run around, flap your arms around and throw the remote at the TV bullshit because they were crappy games. It's gameplay is key, first and foremost. And it was an underpowered console in comparison to the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Then the Wii U came out and everybody finally caught on. Like, There's nothing there. And Nintendo being stretched for how they are, they're still making amazing games. The games that have come out on the Wii U that are first party are great games from Nintendo, but they're once every, like, four fucking years. You, I mean, you've had one Smash Bros. on the Wii U. You didn't even have a Zelda. It's going to come out at the end of the life cycle. Or was the 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 first the last Zelda at the beginning of it? I can't remember. I, I Keep going. I, I can't remember. Re regardless, either. right? They one Smash Bros., one Mario Kart. It's their core uh, titles. It, it, you, yeah. You're paying $400 for something you're going to buy four games for. The in, in the entire course of the life cycle, which should be about four to five years minimum. Yeah, and, and of of like I said, I think I've got five games, five first party games, and that's because I there's no third party like, support on the fucking console. Them, two or three of them really met the expectations. Like right. the new Pikmin did not meet the expectations. The new Smash Brothers, good, but it didn't quite have. And people would probably disagree with me. Didn't quite have the same vibe that I got from Brawl on the Wii. Um, and I mean, I think the new Mario Kart was fun. Um, yeah, and they, they were and still so good I mean, games. The games were yeah. fine, but I think it's the lack of content. Like yeah. you might have two good games released a year on that console. Yeah, because there's no so third party support. They they need and I get third party it. support. And, and that's what I'm saying of that they got to change their mentality of what they're looking at for their console. And I think create these two worlds of Nintendo of that they still do console gaming. It's a revitalized Nintendo for console gaming, but also. Nintendo just banks in on this mobile world because it's, yeah 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 and it's they can have it go and... cross cross platform too right well here's here's an ideal world in my opinion and you can give yours and everybody tuning in feel free to chime in as well they come out with a gangbusters badass four hundred five hundred dollar console that is simple use the same tactics that the PlayStation used don't come up with some new way to reinvent the wheel don't come out with some fisher price controller don't do motion don't do something completely out of left field that's trying to do take this major risk major investment and try and convince people that they need this new thing that they've never had before don't do that come out with a standard console that's powerful up to par with above the ps4 and xbox one where the neo and the scorpio would be somewhere in the middle there and a simple controller have online multiplayer availability, friends list, party chat, Netflix, Twitch, all the regular stuff. I know I'm saying, oh, well, did you just have a PlayStation? Well, you can argue the same thing. You have a PC, but you have your now you have your exclusives. And when you have your Nintendo exclusives, you also have, hey, third-party developers will be like, oh, it's easy for us to port Call of Duty. It's easy, easy for us to port Madden, and they put it on the console so that... People have choice now, and that brings the third-party support to it. So people might not own all three consoles, but they might get PlayStation or Xbox with a Nintendo, or uh, you, you know, or a Nintendo and one or whatever. I mean, people will now have more reason to add that to their larger video game catalog. Um, yeah. 
then they still do the mobile stuff on the side like the pokemon stuff like i mean i don't know what else they could still do from other ips like mario and classic stuff you can't really get into some of the hardcore but that's where nintendo innovates look at pokemon go that is where they're innovating this is something that's never been done before I, augmented reality has been done before but not to this extent this is very cool yeah. and the way it's implementing the gps and interacting with other real people around you and it's bringing people out it's making people go do fitness fucking things video yeah, gamers I've four miles today people that don't <laughs> leave their goddamn house are doing things i don't leave the house because i'm i don't like people but it's a whole different story like people are actually doing stuff it's kind of neat Oh yeah, and so that's that's what I was saying earlier is that like I myself am working on a college campus right now over the summer and I every every time I step outside and I'm on that college campus, I can look any direction and I see people playing that game. I see people playing it. If I go to a single gym, there is at least at least one person at every single gym on campus almost every hour of the day doing something at that gym. There's constantly people rotating between the hot spots for the Pokestops. stops. Like there's a few of them that you can get like two or three of them together that always have uh, those lures placed on them. But it is just unbelievable. Like there's a, a, a small park at the end of campus. And if I, I went there last night, I think it was like 930 when I got there. And there was probably close to 200 people just at That's that pond. Fucking crazy. Just all around it that are just playing this game. And the cool thing too is that it's 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 a whole different world of socialization for gaming that I don't think has existed before. And that yeah. like there's one thing of that you know like a PvP for any sort of game you're gonna play along with strangers. You might not ever know their game their names and you can play with them for years. And but this is like a socialized game that like I, there's a, there's one of the gyms is at a church by where my house is. We went there a couple nights ago to, to, to fight the gym or whatever. And as we're sitting there, four other cars came up and people had their windows down and they're like, hey, what team are you on? And we're like, oh, we're we're team Mystic. And then they're like, oh, fuck you. I'm, I'm team Valor. And we're like, we're going to take this out and we're trying to hold the gym. And it's like it, it's it's a whole new world of socialization because then you have the opposite side to it, too. Where you just everyone's at this pond trying to get rare Pokemon and people are working together. And it's just like someone sees a Dratini. Like, it was actually really funny. Um, uh, someone saw the Dratini and everyone saw it on their phones come up at once. And this is when the servers were absolutely just destroyed. So yeah. there was basically, it was hard to even get in the game. Well, Dratini pops up and everyone's like, oh God, Dratini, Dratini, Dratini. And you can hear everyone talking about it. And then simultaneously, everyone, I guess, is trying to click on it to start going to the battle of it. On all everyone's screen, it just goes error and it just kicks Dratini out. So Dratini <laughs> just disappears and everyone just goes, oh, fuck, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. I you mean, can just it, hear it. It was just, but, it was hilarious. And I think that shows, you know, the power of what it is. But then the question comes, okay, we've seen these mobile niche type of games. And after, let's say, a couple of weeks, it just drops off a cliff. Do you see this happening? <sighs> it's, it depends. Um, if they don't get these servers fixed, then yes. Uh, I even just saw, actually, it was when we were starting the, the, the podcast here, um, I saw a screenshot of that. Actually, an iOS update just went out for uh, Pokemon yep. Go that's supposed to be helping with bugs and glitches. I don't know if it's out on Android quite yet. Uh, so I hope, I mean, I hope that helps fix a few things. But if they don't get these servers fixed, I think start people will eventually get fed up. Uh, I know there, I mean, even if I go out for two hours, that I honestly feel like at this point, I'll, I feel good if I got a solid maybe 40 minutes of actually playing the game at this point and not trying to fight servers. Um, so I can see people getting frustrated in that sense. Uh, the other thing they need to make sure that they're careful with is that I got to make sure the parody of gyms doesn't get out of hand. Um, there's a few right now that like around campus that they haven't been touched because there's these people that have been playing this game nonstop since it came out and they're like level 30. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I've been playing this game for quite a bit of time and I'm level 15 and I feel like that's pretty strong, but there's some people that have just haven't stopped playing this game and for someone that wants to be new to come in this game, that's obviously going to be, be a huge deterrent um, to want to move for it. But they kind of do have a pretty good system for the gyms and that even if you can't get to the top level to beat them for every Pokemon that you beat in the gym, because it's a level system. I don't know if you've seen one yet, Kyle, but it's like there's level one through five of different Pokemon. So there's six, there's five or six different Pokemon there. If right. you beat level one, then you move on to the next Pokemon. So even if you only beat level one, you still bring down the uh, what's the word for it? Um, the uh, 
basically the prestige of that gym. And if the gym prestige reaches zero, then you have the opportunity to take over it with your own team. And, and I so think that's if, where, I, yeah, you, you got to team up with a bunch of people if you want to take exactly. something powerful. So you right? got to take it down. So I think the system they currently have is cool and it makes sense. But I think something they're going to need to do is they're going to have to find uh, at right now. I don't think they need to do it. But in a matter of a few weeks, uh, I think they're going to have to make sure, one, that they do find a, a good way of rotating gyms. So they need to add new ones in, take old ones out, maybe, uh, because I could see it getting a bit boring after a little bit as people try and compete and right. uh, and things like that. Um, but well, gonna, I, I think there, it's I think it really comes down to kind of what you just said there, though, is it's refreshing the content. It's not even necessarily yeah. balance and making sure that new people and what whatnot is always there because I, I get it. That's always going to have to be tweaked because, I, you know, it could be a tiered system where if you just started and you're between level one and level five, you only see exactly the that gyms was something that they, about today is that that like, would be a cool uh, way for them to do that yeah but, they keep they keep the the gyms like you own it between level one and five you own it between yeah. five and ten you own it between and then obviously just once you hit a then you level, have some then super just, whatever everyone can do or something like that yeah i think that would right. be a cool idea but i think you also nailed it on the head there of that um they got to make sure they have fresh content coming into this and that not necessarily not necessarily just stops, limited to new, new pokemon like that. that come in but also yes new poke stops and maybe new ideas that actually go into the game so like i mean a trading system the trading system supposed to come battle yeah. system a pvp battle system i get it like why they didn't launch it with it because at this point it isn't needed Break but i game. feel like that is going <laughs> to be something that that within a matter of a month maybe a little bit longer people are going to start crawling at the like just they they are going to want that because i even right yeah. now like i've got like these i got a lapras and i've got a um a magmar so it's like I have these two Pokemon that I want to show off, but the only way I really can do it is by taking over a gym. And maybe I don't have the level to take over a complete gym just amongst those two. Um, so if I could have PvP, I, I think that's coming. I mean, I think they, the company that was in charge of it did talk about a little bit about what's yet to come. And I think they did mention a trading system. The, the trading system PvP. they've confirmed is on the way. So I'm pretty sure that'll be the next probably 2.0 update or whatever they want to yeah. call it. Um, but yeah, I could see a PVP thing coming too. Cause if they do want this to have legs and last over a year, then they're going to have to have major content updates such as that. Yeah. And um, I, I think a PVP thing will be there. I mean, they already have the battling system. I think the battling system can be improved. It's not terrible, but it's yeah. also not the best. Um, no, I agree. And, and okay. So on that topic, just to skim over it really quickly before we wrap it up here and just kind of refocus the topic. Uh, for people that have not checked out Pokemon Go, give a very quick synopsis of how you play it. And then also for me, because I haven't been able to go to a gym yet because there's none fucking around me. How do you, what is a gym? How does that work? Oh, okay. So like, I mean, yeah, the basic idea is that right now, currently the game is just you're walking around and there's like the main two ways you're getting Pokemon is either by hatching eggs, which is the same idea. You're as the walking game. around physically with your body, yeah. holding your phone, using the yes. GPS functionality. Make that known. So you either hatch an egg or you see a Pokemon and you fling some Pokeballs at it and you catch it. Now, right now, the, the leveling system is not the same that you've seen before in other Pokemon games. The leveling, leveling system is that there's these candies that are associated to each Pokemon, um, but they are associated with all generations of that Pokemon. So say I catch a, a Pidgey, I can use a Pidgey Candy and a Pidgeotto to level it up or a Pidgeot to level it up. And so you level it up by using this uh, Stardust or whatever they call it, along with those candies. And you also use those candies to evolve your Pokemon, but you don't actually train them by battling. Now, uh, where the battling happens, so right for the most part, the game is really just a collection game. It's it's basically, basically like collect these Pokemon, and obviously the higher level, well, the level is relevant is relevant whenever you go into gym battles, and gym battles are basically a uh, there's locations and specific teams, either red, yellow, or blue, um, control the gym, and for every level that that gym increases at, which I think is at like 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, 14,000, like that. Every level that increases at, there's another Pokemon that's added to that gym. So say it's at level 6,000, then I think there's three of them there. And then you get to 8,000, now it's level four, there's four of them there, et cetera. Um, and when you say I'm Team Valor and it's a Team Valor controlled gym, which is the blue team, when I go there and I battle it, Every time I beat a Pokemon at that gym, and once I eventually lose, or if I sweep and I get to the end, that I don't take over the gym because obviously my team already controls it. This is now um, that that beating by beating them, the reputation or whatever of that 
gym is increased and now maybe it goes to level it goes to 10,000 reputation now i can add one of my pokemon in mm-hmm. and now there's five of them there and then the opposite is say someone from uh, yellow or red comes there every time they battle it and every time they beat one of the pokemon there the reputation drops and if it goes from 12,000 to 10,000 it now goes from 6 to 5 pokemon and then once it gets below once it hits 0 there's no pokemon there team red or yellow can now throw in their pokemon and increase the reputation so that's how the gyms rotate and, and it, also the with the gyms how do you actually battle the pokemon that's it's where like I'm it's not move based it's like uh, literally um you you have like a main attack and then you have like a special attack and just by tapping the opposite pokemon you're using your main attack and then there's mm-hmm. this little blue bar if it reaches like one of the points you can use a special attack and mm-hmm. it's just the same idea of that get rid of their hit points using your combat points. So you just tap on the opposing Pokemon. It's a and then if you do a long, regular. And then once you get like your, your special is ready, you do like a long press on them and you do your special and then boom. Mm. So, okay. I did not know that. It's not, so. it's definitely a lot less sophisticated and really, it's really not a Pokemon battling system. I mean, by any stretch of the imagination of what we are usually used to, but I see how they have to do it this way because obviously you're fighting against a bot and it's really a good way, I guess, to make sure that bots actually are competent rather than right. just the, people are obviously going to be able to sweep if you're going against bots. So I think it's a, it's a cool idea. I think it has a lot of room for improvement, but it's it's a good start with where they're at. That's so. cool, though. So And I guess just to come back and wrap it up with the larger discussion, I mean, Nintendo as a company moving forward, I think this is showing very good promise. And I don't know, maybe they're looking at it as a test of should we go third party or should we get rid of the handheld and just do mobile on that side of it? And we still do a console. Oh, I, 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 it's hard to say. I think this is this launch has caused for a lot of very important, a lot of high up meetings if with the executives of Nintendo. I don't think this is what they expected. I think they, I think there is going to be success mm-hmm. with this almost no matter what. But I think this is this might actually be changing the game a bit for what Nintendo is doing because this is, like I said, probably one of the biggest and most uh, spoken of things in regards to like an entertainment industry since I, like I said, since star Wars, at least from what I've seen, I think you see that. And I think it's further proof. Uh, We don't know what the Nintendo NX is. We're probably going to hear about it in a couple months, wink, wink. And when we do find out about it and whatever it is, there is one thing that is certain. If it comes out next year and it bombs and it tanks in the first year, two years of it being out, I think that'll be the end of Nintendo as a console manufacturer as we know it. I think they will then look at the writing on the wall. They'll see where their money's at. It'll be mobile. Maybe the they'll go third party on other consoles, PC. I don't know. But uh, they got a huge opportunity with the NX to recapture that type of audience into the console uh, category. But... The positive is what we're seeing with Pokemon Go is there's obviously an appetite for it, but how do you catch that appetite? And this is one way they've now proven they can. So the other side is a big question mark. So that'd be very interesting to know. So of course, uh, make sure you let us know what you think Nintendo is going to do with uh, the NX, with handhelds, with mobile, with everything they're going forward. Do you like Pokemon Go? Do you think it's going to fall off the map? Um, Let us know in the chat or send us an email at penguinragebiz at gmail dot com or tweet at us as well um but with that being said thank you everybody that has tuned in with us uh today we don't have any questions from the audience for tonight's episode um but of course we've uh, already said where you can let us know for future episodes um if you did not know already the podcast will be posted we're vod on youtube as well as podcasting services such as google play itunes and Stitcher, so you can download them, subscribe to them, subscribe on YouTube, or stream them on those various platforms as well. Um, and of course, follow here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash penguinrage, where I stream Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we record the podcast on Monday nights, normally at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time, where you can tune in, be part of the conversation and the show, and let us know what you think. Otherwise, send us emails, penguinragebiz at gmail.com, or on Twitter, I am Penguin Rage Live. And Brian, what's your Twitter? B Stevenson 014. So feel feel free to hit either of us up with questions you guys got, and we will. No matter really what the topic's about, I mean, even if it's uh, something about the show or something about what we're playing or whatever, we'll uh, we might not talk about it long, but we'll definitely bring it up, and uh, you'll get a little shout out that way. 
Definitely. And like I said, we're on all those different platforms, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Go subscribe. Send us comments in those places as well. Rate us. Give thumbs up, whatever the options are. And until then, we'll be back next week with a new topic, with all the new news. And everybody else, just feel free to jump in and say what up, because that's what the kids do these days. So anyway, thank you, everybody, for being here. You've been great. 